I'm here with Lev Grossman, uh, the author of The Magician's Books. Um, what, in, what sources of inspiration did you pull from when you created these stories, and why was this an important story for you to tell? This story came for me, it came out of my childhood obsession with the Narnia books, um, which were, I think, as they are for a lot of people, they were really formative for me, and I loved them so much. And when I got to be about 28, I became very aware of how poorly they had prepared me for the challenges of uh, later adult life. And I started thinking back, almost like, what would I say to C.S. Lewis if I were going to rewrite these stories but put in all the stuff that I'd learned later about what life was like and how it was crappy and hard? Uh, it was almost like I wrote these books like a letter to C.S. Lewis saying, I love what you did, uh, and yet there's so much that wasn't in these books that I want to put in. Like Penny over there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I imagine um, I love this guy so much. So fucking much. It's true, he does. <laughs> <laughs> when, when you're creating the stories, I imagine you have a visual narrative uh, yeah. running through your brain as well. Now that there actually is a visual thing that people can watch, how does that match up with your original vision of it? Sometimes surprisingly well. Yeah. Um, there's a moment in, uh, uh, in the pilot um, where Quentin casts his very first spell and he just throws this pack of cards into the air and they sort of fall down under the table and they form this house of cards. I mean, it was just perfect. It was perfect. There are other moments where, actually, it, the stuff I wrote doesn't really work visually. Even though I had it clearly in my head, the beast is meant to walk around with a sort of branch in front of his face that conceals it. They just couldn't make it work on screen. Sure. So they put a flock of moths instead, which turned out to be scarier than the branch anyway. It was terrifying. I know. If I had thought of that... I might honestly have just done it that way in the books. Yeah, is that something that's happened uh, often where you've seen something and been like, oh, I kind of like that. And just because the the different medium you don't like, you can still do whatever you want in the book world. Right. This is just, like you said, a different medium. They have to make changes and are there other things that kind of went that route for you? Yeah, they figured out some stuff. Um, they figured out, for example, why Julia did not get into Brankville's initially, uh, which she's possibly the smartest person character in the books, except mm. for Alice. Uh, there's no real reason why she shouldn't have gotten in, uh, but she doesn't in the books. She doesn't in the show, but they figured out why, which I never really did in the books. Mm. So my hat's kind of off to them. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I absolutely look forward to season two. The story's incredible so far, and I can't wait to see where it goes. Thanks, man. All right. Nice meeting you. Nice to meet you. I actually do love it. I think it's it's for me. It's um, it's really exciting because you know everybody else has sort of this character to go off of, but I get to really be creative and, and create my own interpretation of what they're writing in the script.